Hello and welcome to my Minecraft 1.8 tutorial. This is episode number 5 in my How to Survive and Thrive series. And in today's episode we are going to jump into a hole and have ourselves a bit of... I'll give you three guesses and the first three don't count. What do I always say about holes in Minecraft? That they lead to... Yeah, adventure. Wow, you're good. Alright, let's do it. So we have a hole right here. We are at the Mineshaft Meadow. This is where we did our combat training in the previous episode. And there's a lovely hole here. It's a bit dark and scary, but it's got some stuff that we're after, and that is precious metals and potentially gemstones and even, maybe even some treasure, Piggy. Yes. So let's jump down and get started without any further ado. Geronimo! Ow! Ooh, ankle. Ankle, ow. Uh, ice pack. Piggy. <laughs> I do not recommend actually jumping into the hole. This one's kind of short, so it didn't hurt too much. But let us get to work here, folks. We want to get this right here. This is hello. And there's monsters down in holes too, of course. But let's not let's not think about them right now. We want this. This is iron ore, and we can grab this iron ore with a stone pick. And one of the reasons we want to upgrade our pick, in fact, is that we uh, we can't get all the gemstones and precious metals with a stone pick, so we have to upgrade. And this is one of the first things I like to do before I jump into a hole. And there we go. So that's all the iron ore there. We've got seven in that vein. And uh, where there's one iron, there's typically more. So do not stop on the first one. Just keep digging around and leave no iron behind. That is our motto here. That survive and thrive. No iron left behind. And there's a bunch more down here. Let's go ahead and snag it. There's two bits here. And I hear a batty. Hello, batty. We're coming down. Just give us a few moments, please. I want to get prepared before we actually head down any deeper. And oh, dear. It's a rainy day today. But that's okay. We're going to be underground, so we won't even feel the wetness or be able to, or, or uh, have any risk of getting struck by lightning. Good morning, Mr. Bat. Let's just go down a little bit farther and see if we can't find maybe a couple more pieces of iron. Oh, dear. And here we go. Oh, it's the mine shaft, folks. There it is. We saw this in the first or second episode. And spiders and skeletons and all kinds of creepy things. So let's get out of there. Here's a handy tip. When you're caving, always put your torches on the right when you're going into the cave. So that way when you find your way, when you want to find your way back out, you just follow your torches on the left. Aha. Uh Aha. -huh. Uh -huh. I learned that trick from an old miner back when I was a boy. And it does indeed work, and it will save your bacon someday. Of course, there are uh, intersections and things that might cause some problems, but uh, we'll get to show you how to deal with those later. So, we're back on the surface. We're here in the blockhouse because I wanted to make this iron right now. I want to show you guys how to smelt it down. We can't use it as iron ore. We actually have to smelt it into iron blocks or iron ingots anyway, and that's what we can do with this furnace. So I'm going to put the uh, iron ore in the furnace, and we're going to drop in two bits of coal. Um, if you recall from a previous episode, one piece of coal will cook eight items, so we're going to need those two bits. And in the meantime, while that's cooking, we're just going to hang out here and wait. It's going to take a few moments. You can see the flames here cooking up the iron ore, and it will yield iron ingots. So let's wait for all those to finish up and then we'll decide what we're going to do with it. Oh dear. Dreadful, dreadful day. Go away. I don't want any. We've got a, uh, a solicitor here at the door. Hello. Go away, please. This, this really scares me that we don't have anything in the windows. One of these days we'll put some glass up. I'll show you guys how to make glass. You know what? Let's do this. While that iron's cooking, let's make... We can make a fence. So I'm going to show you guys how to make a fence. I really don't feel secure by having those windows open like that. So it's uh, four planks along the sides like that, and then two sticks in the middles. This is a new recipe, by the way. I don't know why they changed it on us. It was perfectly fine before. And you just plop those in the windows. We can look out. But they cannot see in or shoot at us through those. Unfortunately, it's still a bit drafty. I would prefer glass, but we don't have any sand to make the glass yet. We'll do that in the future episode. All right. Oh, it looks like it's done. It is done. Our iron ingots, 15 of them. Let's snag them. And voila! Achievement get. We have acquired hardware. Ah, awesome. Now we get to actually do some crafting with this stuff. So at this point, we have to make a couple of decisions. 
as to what we want to use our first iron for. Now, typically what I like to do is make up an iron pick as one of the first, one of my first upgrades, and that is an iron pick just like that because the iron pick is going to give us the ability to mine resources that the stone pick will not work on, um, such as gold and redstone. So it's always a good idea before you head down underground and do any, any serious spelunking, bring an iron pickaxe with you. The other upgrade I would like to make right now will be a sword. I'm tired of hitting things with sharp stones. Um, I would much prefer to have an iron sword. This does more damage. You can see right here it does plus six attack damage as opposed to five for a sharp stone. And it also is much more durable so it'll last longer. And you don't want to get stuck in a fight with a, with a stone that's just about to pop. I'm going to put these guys in here and get rid of that as well. I'll just keep this. Now I'm going to put that in there as well. It's always good to have a backup in the event you do happen to croak and you've got to come back to something. And you, rather than having to make new stuff, you can always have that in there as a backup. So not a bad idea. Let's get rid of the andesite. We don't need that. And okay, I think we're good to go. Um, oh, wait, one more thing. We've got all this other iron here. Let's make up some armor. So we have our leather armor here, but we want to upgrade these pieces into iron eventually. And then from there, we'll upgrade to uh, probably diamond. But before we get there, we're going we're gonna to use up this iron. And my initial thought here is to just make the leather, uh, replace the leather tunic with an iron chest plate. That will require eight ingots. Or we could do, we could do a, uh, a helmet and boots that will require nine total. That'll give us two pieces, but I think we're better off going with the replacing the uh, the tunic. Now, if you're not sure about that and you want to see what all the math is behind uh, what's better, uh, how you know what's more efficient, either one piece or two pieces of iron, then check the wiki for that. I don't really get too involved in the math. Math is boring to me anyway, and it makes my eyes bleed. So I'm just going to go with that because, well, I mean, it looks good. Right? It's a little cold, a little damp inside, but I feel much better about this scenario going down underground, and we're going to go down right now. Okay, let us be off. I'm going to jump back into the hole and go see if we can't find some more iron. And, of course, we're going to find, uh, hopefully, some coal down here. I'm just going to eat right now, so that way, if I do take damage, I'll be able to heal right away enough to think about it. Some people like to wait much longer before they actually eat until they actually have to, but not me. I don't take any chances. Now, when you start going down in underground, uh, an important thing to keep in mind here is always have an exit or multiple exits. We're coming down this way. I just took that one stone block away so that I can make a hasty retreat if I need to because you never know what you're going to find down here. And, of course, we have the mine shaft that we located not too long ago, and I'm going to start putting up some torches and getting some light on the subject. I hear bad guys down here. Now, here's something that you won't run into in caves, but you will run into in mine shafts. I don't think we're going to explore the mine shaft today because it, they can be very dangerous and there's a lot of information to cover, but I would like to go down into that cave at the very least because I see some iron there, and uh, we can do some exploring down that way. So what we're going to do... First things first, let's just go down this mine shaft. Ah, hello! And cover it up. <laughs> okay. An arrow comes flying out of the dark down one of the shafts. And fortunately, he's a terrible shot and he missed. And I think we should watch out for that, spi that spider web. I'm going to show you how those spider webs operate here in a second. But I think first things first, let's just cover this up. There are darker and scarier and nastier things in mine shafts that we really don't want to deal with right now. And that being um, uh, cave spiders. They have venomous bites and we don't want to bother with them right now. So, you will find these in mine shafts. And since it's right here, we might as well deal with it. Let me show you what happens when you make contact with a cobweb. Huh. I'm sinking. I'm sinking. Help me. I can't get out. You can get out, actually, but you, it's very difficult. So I'm trying to get out of this thing now, but it's holding me fast. It's very sticky and gooey. And, uh, okay, I'm free. So you do not 
want to get in a fight or run into any bad guys when you're stuck in a cobweb. So here's what I do. Take it. Kill it. But make sure you use a sword because you will get the string out of it. If you break it with anything else, it's going to take a lot longer and you, and you won't get the string out of it. So there's a handy little tip. We'll cover that more when we get to the actual um, when we get to the actual mine shaft episode, which will be down the pike someday. All right, let's go down here into the natural cave. But this lava is kind of frightening me. Let's just cover that up like that. And here we go, down, down, down. I hear bones. Let's put a torch out front here very quickly. And then, as I had said before, we always want to have a way out. So let's make a stair. Very quick and easy stair. Let's not release any of that lava, though. There we go. Perfect. Okay. There's our escape route. And now we're going to go down here a little farther. I see that iron. We're going to come back for it. And we're going to put... Oh! Ravine! Wow! Awesome! And we're putting torches on the right. But hold on. Scary things. We're going to have to put torches on the left over here, too. Oh, my gosh. Look at that creeper right up there. It is a good idea when you're underground in caverns to make sure you have sort of a 360 degree uh, view. Always look around. Look at up, look down, look to the right, look behind. and Because uh, you just never know when something's going to sneak up on you. Because there's all of these holes and tunnels and things around. Hello, buddy! Uh, going down? Going down. Goodbye! Going to visit a friend. Oh, he made it. Wow. Pretty long fall. I love ravines. Look at this. This is awesome. But I don't want to get too excited because it's still way too dark here. And you've just got to be on your toes. Your head needs to be on a swivel, like a bubble head. And just start putting down some torches, lighting this up. Ah! Arrow out of the dark. And we're going we're gonna to show him some what for here as soon as he turns that corner. Ah, hello. And we'll kill him with a sword. Save our arrows. Thank you. Got the arrow back. Oh, don't look at the Enderman. Dang it. All right, awesome. We are not going to cover ravines today either. I just wanted to give you guys kind of a, a, a look at caving and iron smelting. So let's just concentrate right now on the on the uh, resources at hand, which is this, which is the iron right here. Oh, dear. Hello. <laughs> here comes a little creeper, buddy. And we'll shoot you at least once. And then we'll tag him with our sword. Of course, the sword now is doing a little bit more damage. Awesome. And let's get this iron. They're so quiet. That's why they call them creepers, right? And here we have a little baddie. Hello, baddie! They're friendly, so just leave them alone. And let me show you what I'd like to do with my torches for areas like this that are all wide open all around you. Because, obviously, the torch on the right trick is not going to apply in a location like this. Let's just kill this bum. Whoa, you missed. Aha, have at you. So, let's say we're over here, right? And we've got all of this space. We've got a tunnel that way. We can go that way. We can climb up on that mine shaft. And there's another uh, cavern down that way. So, what I like to do is is mark the territory that I came from with a double whammy, two torches like that, indicating that this is the way I came in. And I put them side by each, okay? So that indicates horizontal go this way. And then when I have a vertical um, uh, climb, like this one indicating this way leads out, I put torches one on top of the other. And I can do the same here, which indicates the way out. Now clearly, I've only been here for a few minutes, so it's really easy knowing where you've come from. But once you get out um, and you're out in the world here for a while and you're exploring, everything tends to look the same after a while. So you want to make sure that you leave those torches behind. So that way when you're standing here, you'll see that over there and you'll be like, okay, that's the way to go. Very cool. And on smaller tunnels, there's some more iron and coal, you can put the, uh, the torches on the right. And torches on the floor, too, if you want to light these areas up. But the ones on the wall will indicate your path that you have come from. Gotcha. Oh, who shot me? All right, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to grab up this iron, and then we're going to head up. Uh, ouch. <laughs> and then we're going to head upstairs and make a full suit of iron. I think we should have enough here. You can see here that the iron armor is much more durable 
than the uh, the leather as well. We're taking some hits, but it's not it's not degrading as quickly, and that's one of the advantages of using metal armor. And it also absorbs more damage as well. So definitely want to get yourself some new armor ASAP. And iron you can find relatively close to the surface. Some of those other ores like the gold and the diamond and emeralds, well, they'll be deeper underground. Ooh, that's a bat. So for now, I'm just going to grab up this iron. No iron left behind. And I'm going to need some more coal as well. And then we'll head back up to the surface, cook it up, and we'll craft up a full suit of armor. And maybe we'll get a full set of tools out of it as well. Bats, by the way, are completely harmless. They're docile. They just kind of float around. They'll latch onto a, a, a ceiling now and again and just hang from their feet. They don't drop anything, so there's really no point in killing them either. They're just sort of decoration. So I, I just tend to leave them alone. Though you will, every now and then, end up killing one by accident because they tend to jump out in front of you. They dive bomb you when you're fighting the enemy. And I think they may be working for the bad guys. It seems that way anyway, because they're always taking one for the team like that. Poor little buggers. Alright, I think we're good to go. I've got 25 ore right now. And 26 coal. So I'm going to head back to the surface. We'll go back to the blockhouse. And uh, we'll get these smelted up into iron ingots. All right, looks like the furnaces are done. Let's check them out. And by the way, when you take smelted items out of a furnace, you will gain a little bit of experience. Pretty cool stuff. 27 iron ingots in total. Let us go ahead and finish up making all of our armor pieces. There's the helmet. There are my pants. And then the booties. Lovely. Unfortunately, we're going to lose this uh, these, this beautiful color ensemble that I had. But now we match 100%. Look at that. Full metal armor. Nice. And what else can we do? We have uh, 11 iron ingots. I think what we'll do is... Oh, we'll just go ahead and... Let's just go ahead and upgrade everything. So we want our axe. Got a nice iron axe. And a shovel. And that will uh, that'll allow us to put some of our hand-me-downs in here for backup in case we kick the bucket. Which we are bound to do someday. And there we go. So now we are fully upgraded to iron 100%. And we even have seven iron ingots left over, which I have a plan for in the next episode. And we might even go down into that ravine. But I think we're probably going to work on some farming for food and uh, potentially upgrade our hidey hole. Our hidey hole is a little bit snug and I have a plan to make a newer one. And I think uh, farming is probably going to be one of the next episodes that we do pretty darn soon. All right, guys and gals, I hope you enjoyed. I'm just gonna head back home and uh, maybe have some dinner. If my, show off my new armor, ha, what do you think? And uh, I'll see you guys in the next episode. So hope you enjoyed. And if you did, a like in the video is always appreciated. And boom. I said a like. That's a dislike. And just for that, pop. Um, <laughs> and uh, don't worry about swimming across rivers with your full metal armor. Because you can swim. <laughs> just kidding. You can swim fine. See? Ah! No, I don't want to broadcast. <laughs> Wrong button. All right, guys and gals, we'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day. And, oh, just in time for night. Whee! We'll see you later. Bye-bye.